Yes, you must live life beautifully and not allow the spirit of the world that makes gods out of power, riches and pleasure make you forget that you have been created for greater things. This was Mother Teresa and this is the good, the bad and the pure evil. Born on G.C. Gonks on August 26, 1910, into a Kosovo Albanian family in Skopje. She was baptized quickly just a day later on August 27th. Later in life, she would consider the day of her baptism her true birthday. At a young age, she became really interested in stories of missionaries and their services in Bengal. By the time she reached 12, she had made up her mind that she would commit herself to a religious life. At age 18, her resolve grew on August 15, 1928, as she prayed at the shrine of the Black Madonna of Fatina Lentis. She would leave her home soon after this and join the sisters of Lorette at Lorette's Abbey, Ratfarman, in Ireland. Here she learned English with the intention to become a missionary. She would never see her mother and sister after this. The family remained in Skopje until 1934 and then they moved to Tirana. In 1929 she arrived in India and started her training to become a member of a religious order, also called Novitiate, in Darjeeling, Lower Himalayas. Here she learned Bengali and taught at St. Teresa's School near the convent. May 24, 1931, she took her first religious vows. She then chose to be named after Teresa de Lisieux, who is the patron saint of missionaries. May 14, 1937, the now Teresa took her solemn vows while she was a teacher at Lorette's Convent School in East Calcutta. She would take on the style of, quote, the mother, as is custom of Loretto. She was here for near 20 years. She would become headmistress in 1944. She loved being a teacher helping the children, but the poverty in Calcutta broke her heart and concerned her deeply. The Bengal famine happened in 1943, bringing misery, pain and anguish and death to the city. August 1946, more devastation happened with the Direct Action Day or 1946 Calcutta killings, a period of conflict and violence between Muslims and Hindus. In 1946, Mother Teresa was traveling by train to Darjeeling. During the trip, Mother Teresa felt she was called by her higher conscience to serve the poor of India for Jesus. She was allowed to leave the school and in 1950, she founded the Missionaries of Charity and began wearing a white sari with two blue borders as the orders have it. So the trip happened September 10th, 1946 on her annual retreat. The call within the call as she described it was to leave the convent, help the poor while living with them. She said, quote, it was an order to fail would have been to break the faith, end quote. In 1948, she started her missionary work with the poor. Gone was the traditional Loretto habit, replaced with the clean white sari with a blue border. She adopted Indian citizenship, spending months in Patna, gaining basic medical training at Holy Family Hospital. From there, she headed off to the poor community. She founded a school in Muthihil, Halkata and started her work helping, tending and caring for the poor and the hungry. In 1949, word had spread and a group of young women came to help. This is when she began to lay the foundation for a new religious community, those out to help the poorest among the poor. What she was doing caught the attention of the Indian officials. In her diary, she wrote the first year was extremely difficult. She had nothing, no income, begging for food and supplies. She began to doubt her decision, 
She was very lonely, stressed, and tempted to give it up, pack up, and go back to the comforts of the convent. She wrote, quote, Our Lord wants me to be a free nun covered with the poverty of the cross. Today I learned a good lesson. The poverty of the poor must be so hard for them. While looking for a home, I walked and walked till my arms and legs ached. I thought how much they must ache in body and soul, looking for a home, food and health. Then the comfort of Loretto came to tempt me. You have only to say the word and all that will be yours again. The tempter kept on saying, of free choice, my God, and out of love for you, I desire to remain and do whatever be your holy will in my regard. I did not let a single tear come. End quote. October 7, 1950, Mother Teresa got approval from the Vatican for her diocesan congregation, which would later become the Missionaries of Charity. Mother Teresa described it as taking care of, quote, the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the leopards, all those people who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society, people that have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone, end quote. 1952 she opened her first hospice with the help from Calcutta officials. She was able to get her hands on an abandoned Hindu temple and converted it into the Kalat home for the dying and it would be free to the poor. Later it would be called the Kalat, the home of the pure heart. Those who came got medical help and were given the opportunity to die with dignity. All fates were followed. Muslims were read the Quran, Hindus received water from the Gandhis, and Catholics received extreme unction, also known as the anointment of the sick. Mother Teresa would call what they were doing, quote, a beautiful death, end quote, and said it was for the people, quote, who lived like animals to die like angels, loved and wanted, end quote. She went on to open a hospice for leprosy, calling it Shanti Nagar, City of Peace. The Missionaries of Charity created clinics for outreach leprosy throughout Calcutta, dressing wounds, providing food and giving medicine. They would care for and shelter homeless children. In 1955, Mother Teresa opened Nirmala Shisu Baham the children home of the Immaculate Heart. It would become a haven to orphans, runaways and homeless youths. People heard what the congregation was achieving and wanted to help. Recruits came along with donations. By the 60s it had opened hospices, orphanages and leper houses all over India. Mother Teresa would next expand the congregation abroad. She opened a house in Venezuela in 1965 with five sisters. In 1968, she opened houses in Rome, Tanzania and Austria. Then in the 70s, the congregation opened houses and foundations in the US, Asia, Africa and Europe. In 1963, the Missionaries of Charity Brothers were founded. And then in 1976, a contemplative branch of the sisters was created. Catholics and non-Catholics were enrolled in the co-workers of Mother Teresa, the sick and the suffering co-workers, and the lay missionaries of charity. In 1981, Mother Teresa founded the Corpus Christi movement for the priests, after a request came from many priests to do so. And then in 1984, with Joseph Langford founded the Missionaries of the Charity Fathers, this was to combine the vocational aims of the missionaries of the charity with the resources of the priesthood. By 1997, the once 13 member Calcutta congregation had hit over 4,000 sisters who managed orphanages, AIDS hospice and charity centres all over the globe. Here they cared for refugees, the blind, disabled, old, alcoholics, the poor, the homeless, victims of floods 
epidemics and famine. By 2007, the missionaries of charity came to about 450 brothers and 5,000 sisters. All across the world, they operated 600 missions, schools and shelters in 120 countries. Mother Teresa would often remark, quote, By blood I am Albanian, by citizenship I am Indian, by faith I am Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. End quote. She was incredible with languages, speaking Bengali, Albanian, Serbian, English and Hindu. She would also make trips outside India for humanitarian reasons. In 1982, the siege of Beirut happened. In its height, Mother Teresa went and rescued 37 children who were trapped on the front lines in a hospital. She did this by brokering a temporary ceasefire between Israeli army and Palestinian guerrillas. Mother Teresa, along with Red Cross workers, traveled through an intense war zone to the hospital and evacuated the children. In the 80s, Eastern Europe began to open up more. With this openness, Mother Teresa expanded the missionaries of charity to these countries that were communists and had previously rejected her efforts. She started many projects and she would often be criticized about her opinions against divorce and abortion. But she would say, quote, no matter who says what, you should accept it with a smile and do your own work, end quote. She would visit Armenia after the devastating 1988 earthquake and even met Soviet Premier Nikolai Ruskov. She went to Ethiopia to help the hungry. She went to Chernobyl to be with and help the radiation victims. And in 1991, returned to Albania for the first time since she left all those years before. In Tirana, she opened a Missionaries of Charity Brothers home. By 1996, 517 missions of Missionaries of Charity operated in 100 countries. The number of sisters went from 12 to thousands, all serving the poorest of the poor in 450 centers all over the world. The first home of Missionaries of Charity in the US was in South Bronx, New York City. By 1984, the congregation operated 19 all over the US. In 1983, Mother Teresa was in Rome visiting Pope John Paul II. While here, she had a heart attack. She recovered and continued with her missionaries. In 1989, though, she would have a second heart attack. This time, she required a pacemaker. In 1991, she was in Mexico and she was hit with pneumonia and more problems with her heart were discovered. With her failing health, Mother Teresa offered to resign as the head of the charity, but a secret ballot was done showing the sisters wanted her to stay. Feeling honored, she agreed. In 1996, she had a fall that broke her collarbone. Four months later, she had malaria, and then she started in heart failure. She would have heart surgery to improve her health issues, but at this time, it was clear she was dying and this surgery would buy her time. When she was first hospitalized with heart issues, Archbishop of Calcutta, Henry Sebastian de Sousa, ordered a priest to perform an exorcism on her, an order that had her full permission to complete. It was done as the heart problems were thought to be the work of the devil, not medical, and that the devil was attacking her for her good deeds. March 13, 1997, health rapidly declining, Mother Teresa resigned from the Missionaries of Charity. Just six months later, she died September 5th, 1997. By then, the Mysteries of Charity had over 4,000 sisters, Associated Brotherhood of 300, operating over 600 missions in 123 countries worldwide. This included hospices, homes for people with HIV or AIDS, leprosy and TB. They had soup kitchens, children's counselling, fi family counselling, orphanages and schools. By the 1990s, 
the missionaries of charity were helped by co-workers hitting over one million. Mother Teresa lay in repose at St. Thomas, Calcutta in an open casket for a week until her funeral. The Indian government gave her a state funeral in gratitude for her service to the poor, regardless of religion in their country. Five priests, along with Cardinal Secretary of State Angelo Sedono, the Pope's representative, performed the last rites. Her death was mourned across the world in secular religious communities. Nawaz Sharif, Prime Minister of Pakistan, called to her, quote, a rare and unique individual who lived long for higher purposes. Her lifelong devotion to care of the poor, the sick and the disadvantaged was one of the highest examples of service to our humanity, end quote. Heavier Perez de Cullier, former UN Secretary General, would say, quote, she is the United Nations, she is peace in the world, end quote. In 1962, the Indian government awarded Mother Teresa the Padma Sri. It is the fourth highest civilian award. Then in 1969, they awarded her the Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding. In 1980, she was given India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratan. In 1992, her official biography would come out by Naveen Sharlal, and in Calcutta, some Hindus worshipped her as a deity. To mark her 100th birthday, the Indian government issued a special 5 Indian rupee coin, the exact amount Mother Teresa had when she came to India. The coin was issued on August 28, 2010. But not everyone thought Mother Teresa was great. A rupee chart Chatterjee was a doctor born and raised in Calcutta. In 1980, he became an activist down in the slums before he moved to the UK. He would claim he never saw any nuns in the slums, at least not where he was. Arup would seriously criticise Mother Teresa for promoting a cult of suffering giving negative, rundown images of Calcutta. Donations and funding would go missing. He accused her of hyping up the work they were doing and using privileges for her own gain. According to him, hygiene issues like reusing needles only approved after her death in 1997, or so he claims. Bikash Ranja Bhattacharya, who was a mayor of Calcutta from 2005 until 2010. He said she made no difference to the poor of the city, nothing to which she was claiming. He also claimed she glorified sick and illness instead of treating it. He claimed the city was indeed poor, but never to the standard, she said, and never full of leopards or beggars, as she portrayed. Bharuti Yaja Janata Party bumped heads often with Mother Teresa while she was alive over the Christian Dalits. But once she was dead, they praised her highly and sent a representative to her funeral. The right wing Fishwa Hindu Parishad Party was completely against the decision allowing her a state funeral. Secretary Kishari would say her first duty was to the church, and he accused her of favouring Christians, doing what he called secret baptisms of the dying. February 2015, Mohan Bhagwat, part of the Rastriu Swaihang Shivakshang, a, a right-wing party, he claimed Mother Teresa was converting those she served into Christians. Many high public figures would call all these claims false. In other parts of the world, she received the Roman Magsese Award for Peace and International Understanding in 1962 for her work in Asia. 
By the 70s, she was known worldwide and becoming an international celebrity. Her fame is thought to be slightly associated to the Malcolm McGridge's 1969 documentary, Something Beautiful for God. This would also be a book of his in 1971. At the same time, the Catholic community began honouring her. In 1971, Pope Paul VI gave her Pope John XXIII Peace Prize for her work with the poor, her display of Christian charity and efforts for peace. In 1976, she was awarded Peacem in Terrace, or the Peace and Freedom Award. Sainthood was sought after her death, and in 1982, for her service to Australia, community and humanity at large, she was appointed to the Honorary Companion of the Order of Australia. The US and UK also gave her a number of awards to her, including the Order of Marriage in 1983, an honorary citizen of the US in 1996. Albania, her home country, awarded her the Golden Honour of the Nation in 1994. But this award and her acceptance of it gained controversy, including accepting the Haitian Legion of Honour Award. She was also criticised for supporting the Duvalius, a corrupt businessman, Charles Keating, and Robert Maxwell. She even wrote to the judge of Keating's trial, asking for clemency. Universities throughout India and the West granted her honorary degrees. Other civilian awards she received include a Balzan Prize in 1978. This promotes humanity, peace and brotherhood among people. She also received the Albert Schweitzer International Prize in 1975. April 1976, she would visit the university in Pennsylvania, where the university president, William J. Bryan, presented her with La Storta Medal for Human Service. Here she called upon an audience of nearly 5,000 to get to know poor people, feeding others or simply spreading joy and love. She would say, quote, The poor will help us grow in sanctity, for they are Christ in disguise of distress. End quote. In late summer 1987, Mother Teresa received an honorary Doctor of Social Science degree and nod to her service and ministry to the help the destitute and sick from the university. During her life, she was among the top 10 women in the annual Gallup's Most Admired Man and Woman poll 18 times, finishing first place many times in the 80s and the 90s. 1979, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for her quote, her work in the struggle to overcome poverty and distress, which also constitutes a threat to priests. End quote. She would refuse the lavish ceremony that comes with the award, asking the cost, being $192,000, to be given to the poor in India. She would remark that earthly rewards were important only if they helped her to help the world's needy. Criticism, though, would always follow her. A paper by Canadian academics Serge Lavia. Geneva Chardot and Carol Sentinel would say Mother Teresa's clinic of millions in donations, but this wasn't reflected in medical care, treatment, nutrition or diagnosis systems. All three had the opinion that, quote, Mother Teresa believed the sick must suffer like Christ on the cross, end quote. It would go on to state if the money was actually used, then the health of the city would have massively changed, creating high standards of palliative care facilities. One of her most outspoken critics was English journalist and atheist Christopher Hitchens. He wrote an article in 2003 saying, quote, This returned us to the medieval corruption of the church, which sold indulgence to the rich while preaching hellfire and continuance to the poor. Mother Teresa was not a friend of the poor, she was a friend of poverty. She said that suffering was a gift from God. She spent her life opposing the only known cure for poverty, which is the empowerment of women and the emancipation of them from a livestock version of compulsory reproduction. 
end quote. Not done yet, he accused her of being hypocritical as she chose advanced treatment for her heart condition. He claimed she didn't want to help people and claimed she lied to donors and wasn't truthful about where the money was going. He spoke to her apparently and she told him she wasn't working to alleviate poverty. She was working to expand on Catholics and that she does this in all for Christ and the church. Now, in 1994, she had a real serious oh no moment when she argued sexual abuse allegations against Jesuit priest Donald McGuire were not true. This defense of a man who later in 2006 was convicted of sexually molesting many children was highly criticized and controversial. She also had no friends in the abortion rights groups who also criticized Mother Teresa's opinion against abortion and contraception. But there were more in support of her than against her. Pope John Paul II was one. He was in awe in what she was doing, saying, quote, where did Mother Teresa find the strength and presence to place herself completely at the sources of others? She found it in prayer and in the silent contemplation of Jesus Christ his holy face, his secret heart, end quote. Privately though, Mother Teresa struggled massively with doubts in her faith, pretty much on and off her whole life. Spiritual dryness, as it was called, wasn't uncommon even in those who would become saints. Teresa of Lissus, the saint Mother Teresa chose to be named after, would describe it as, quote, Knights of Nuttiness. End quote. Before Pope Pius XII's death in 1958, Mother Teresa was having doubts for about 10 years. But after his death, while praying for him, the darkness of doubt was lifted. But this only lasted a mere five weeks. So after her death in 1997, the Holy See, which is the jurisdiction, of the Pope in his role as the Bishop of Rome. They began the process of beautification, the second of three steps to canonization. Brian Kolodijak was appointed postulator, who is the person to guide the cause of beautification or canonization through the traditional process required by the Catholic Church. He was appointed by the Diocese of Calcutta his mission was to prove Mother Teresa's virtue was heroic. Brian submitted 76 documents, 35,000 pages, based on 113 interviews with witnesses, all who were asked 263 questions. For canonization, you need to prove and or document a miracle stemming from the intercession of the prospective saint. In 2002, the Vatican came to recognize a miracle connected to Mother Teresa. A woman named Monica Bezra had a tumor in her abdomen and she was given a locket with a photo of Mother Teresa inside. The claim is, after wearing this locket, her tumor was cured. Monica would say a beam of light came shining from the photo and after this her cancer was cured. But Monica's husband and some medical staff said it wasn't a miracle, but the medicine that cured the tumor. The doctor who treated Monica, Rajan Mustafi, told the New York Times her cyst was caused by TB. It wasn't a miracle, she took medicine for nearly a year. Her husband praised the doctors for curing her and that the so-called miracle was a hoax. Monica said anything medically related to her, from her records, sonograms, prescriptions and notes, all were taken by Sister Bita of the Missionary of Charity. Time magazine were informed calls to Sister Bita and his sister Naimala, who was now head of the order. Both of them didn't comment. Staff at the hospital where Monica was treated all said they were made by the order to claim a miracle. When this alleged miracle came out before it was recognized by the Vatican, 
it was reviewed by West Bengal Health Minister Partho D in February 2000. He investigated all medical records of Monica. D will conclude nothing strange came about her illness and it was cured from the treatment. D though wouldn't give the name of the Vatican doctor that certified Monica Bezra's cure as a miracle. While going through her beautification and canonization, the Vatican looked at all areas of her life, both good and bad. Both Christopher Hitchens and Chatterjee spoke to the tribunal regarding their thoughts. All allegations were investigated by the Congregation for the Cases of Saints. April 21st, 1999, the group concluded no objection to Mother Teresa's canonization. October 19, 2003, Mother Teresa was beautified, becoming what Catholics called blessed. December 17, 2015, Vatican Press Office would announce Pope Francis recognized the second miracle attributed to Mother Teresa. The miracle was that of a man with multiple brain tumors in 2008 and he was cured. This miracle was brought to the attention of the post postulation during World Youth Day in 2013. Investigations went from June 19 to June 26, 2015, later transferred to the Congregation for the Cases of Saints, who then issued a decree recognizing the investigation was completed. September 4, 2016, Pope Francis canonized Mother Teresa at a ceremony in St. Peter's Square, Vatican City. Tens of thousands witnessed it. 15 government delegations attended along with 1,500 homeless. It was televised on the Vatican Channel and streamed online. Her hometown of Scopa held a week-long celebrations. And in India, a special mass was celebrated by the Missionaries of Charity in Calcutta. Thank you all for listening. Join me next time for the story of the Exxon Valdez oil spill, which happened March 24, 1989 in Prince William Sound, Alaska. The Exxon Valdez was an oil supertanker owned by Exxon Shipping Company. It was heading to Long Beach but hit Prince William Sound Bly Reef in Alaska at about midnight and spilled nearly 11 million gallons of crude oil over days into the waters. It is the second largest oil spill in the US waters. The location where it happened was remote, only getting there by helicopter, plane or boat. So response efforts were slow and the usual plans were difficult to implement. Until then, this was the good, the bad, and the pure evil.